That's a wetsuit. That's yeah. not Nick's body. Yeah, Jamila pulled it, man. That is not my body. You don't inspect when you're in the fourth grade. It's a uh -huh. reverse Photoshop. <laughs> is that a thing? It would just be a regular Photoshop. Thank you, Jamila. <laughs> Back to the NBA Finals. And the availability of Kevin Durant. So KD practiced yesterday and is now listed as questionable tonight in Toronto. Warriors in desperation mode. They're down 3-1. They could sure use KD. Nick, is Kevin Durant's return the only chance the Warriors have at this point? They need a paradigm shifter. Now, I don't think it will be enough to change where this series is going, which is where you saw it going from the beginning, where you saw it going from the beginning, not where I saw it going from the beginning. You, you had the Raptors winning the series, and you had them winning in game four. I thought, look, if the Warriors have... If they have anything left in this dynastic championship run, it's going to show up at home in a must-win game. And it showed up for about a quarter and a half, mm -hmm. and then they slowly but surely let go of the rope to where in that third quarter they looked like a shot fighter. Mm -hmm. They looked like a team that was unable to punch back in the way they had always punched back over the course of this run. So I don't know what version of Kevin Durant you're going to get tonight, but they need a version, if for no other reason than to give their team a belief, here's why it'll be different. Because they have been, they're not unlucky to be down 3-1. They could be down 4-0 and it could be over, if not for a brilliant six-minute stretch of basketball in the third quarter of game two. They, the Raptors have flatly outplayed them on both ends of the court in nearly every game this series. So whatever version of Kevin Durant he can muster, I believe, is the first critical component to them having any chance because at this point, they're not just being physically beaten. They are mentally beaten right now. For the first time in five years, I've watched this team, and to pull a line from Vincent Goodwill, they looked like the team that looked on the other side of the court and said, these guys are better than us. They never thought that. Even the Cavs, when they beat them, they never thought they were actually better than them. They just got beat by them. They need something to shift that. I think KD is the only person who can. Whether or not KD can offer them enough offense like they're looking for, help mm -hmm. on defense, whatever it is, do you think, like Nick said, just, just the presence of KD alone is enough to just sort of shift the momentum and be a psychological edge for this Warriors team? No, because the Kevin Durant that's going to take the court, he had not played any basketball with Draymond. Where he, could, where he was limited. He hadn't played any basketball with Steph where he was limited. They don't have any team chemistry where Kevin Durant is limited as a scorer, that he's limited on defense. So now when I ask Kevin Durant to help, is it Kevin Durant that I'm used to from a month ago? Or is it Kevin Durant that has a partially torn calf dismissed? 30 days of critical playoff basketball. So to me, unless you guys create a scenario where you tell me Kevin Durant is coming back 100% and he's been able to practice long enough that he has the type of cardio that he can play over 30 minutes, that would be the only way this series is going to get changed around. That Kevin Durant's not going to show up to the first game next year when he's playing for the New York Knicks. That's over with. He has a partially torn calf. He's not going to be 100%. And he is not better. I totally disagree with the players saying, oh, Kevin Durant at 70% is better than the other guys at 100. I totally disagree with that. I always disagree with that even when I was playing and I was the player at question. All right? When people used to say, well, Chris, you're better off at 80, 90 No, I'm not. Being at full strength, and especially in a, a competition like they're in, you need your full roster. And Kevin Durant's not going to be healthy. He is not enough of Kevin Durant to be the answer to get this series turned around. Well, Liz, I don't think Kevin Durant coming back will turn the series around. But I think he's the only, it's the only hope they have to give themselves a chance to turn it around. The story they will tell themselves is simple. We get KD back tonight, and we go to Toronto and we win. Then we're back home at Oracle for game six, the final game ever at Oracle. And then all of a sudden... We're in game seven. We've come back from 3-1 down before. We have also had what we are trying to do to the Raptors happen to us in the NBA Finals. And it's a chance to erase all those 2016 3-1 memories and a chance for Kevin Durant to erase all the they don't, your luxury, not a necessity, as guys like me have been saying. You know why Nick and the Warriors are talking about, oh, we were up 3-1, oh, we were down 3-1? You know the reason why, Jenna? Because on the basketball court, they don't have anything to grab. Correct. So now they're just grabbing it, just making stuff up. Oh, this is like, no, it's not. Right. This is not like being up. This is not like being down. 
All right, both of those situations were totally had enough power in itself. And the game number five was the pivotal game. When Golden State did come back, it was a pivotal game. When Cleveland did come back, it was the pivotal game. But I don't believe Kevin Durant, he's not going to be able to show the type of health that would lead them to believe, hey, you know something? We just lost two teams on our home court. Oh, we feel confident going back to a game there. We feel going back to Toronto game number seven. I don't believe they're going to have that type of confidence. Just re real quick, when the when the Warriors blew the 3-1 lead in 2016, the year before they got Kevin Durant, the thing that set this entire thing in motion, it, you, you listen to people, David Griffin or people on that Cavs team, when they found out Draymond was suspended, there was an invigoration throughout the roster. Now they won that game, but the Cavs did by double digits. LeBron scored 41, and then the next game with Draymond back, LeBron scored 41, and they won. So I, I think they would have won that game even if Draymond had been out there. But the players there say it gave them, a, when they had been handled the first four games of that series, except for game three, it gave them a flicker of belief. And I just wonder if hearing Kevin Durant is playing can give them a flicker of belief, because what they also X and O's wise, that isn't just grasping onto things, they need some front court shooting option. Draymond is shooting 18% from three. Iggy is shooting 23% from three. They have no, that right now it is just a backcourt offensively, and the Raptors are too good defensively for you to be able to beat them with just Steph and Clay. All right, let's stay with KD for a second. What do you make of the report that there's been some confusion and angst, maybe some head scratching by some of the Warriors regarding KD's slow return? I believe there's always confusion in, in NBA locker rooms, NFL locker rooms when a player's injured, because that guy's disconnected from the team. There's no type of machine that will dictate ever how what is the pain tolerance for a certain injury. You have two guys, same injury, what they can do on and off the court is totally different based on their pain tolerance. Is a guy a fast healer? It's fairly obvious that this tear was more significant than over a month that they haven't had enough healing that he could get on the basketball court. So regardless of what a guy can take, if the injury is not healing itself, which this one hasn't, then you can't work out. You can't get on the court. So you can't will yourself to get back in there. I don't believe that Kevin Durant in any world that people want to look at and reality is created, that he could play basketball. Kevin Durant is in his safest spot on the basketball court. And talking to an NBA executive, they believe that Kevin Durant will play basketball till he's 40. He's a gym rat, loves to go to the gym. Steph talks about him at the gym, how he's savant, and all the things that he's learned about KD since he's been there in these three years. So, no, I don't give it any type of, of, of credibility that Kevin Durant could have played. Now, do I believe that people behind the scenes stay stupid stuff? Yes. People don't understand sport? Yes. I understand that people are jealous and envious because he might be leaving? Yes, there might be saying things, but credibility to it? I don't give any credibility to it. I think if Kevin Durant could play, he'd be playing. I think that the, and I would, I wouldn't even be comfortable discussing this if it wasn't two guys and Tim Kawakami and Sam Amick both reporting seemingly similar things, which is there are guys on the Warriors that feel, guys in the organization, that if it were Steph or Clay or Iguodala or Draymond who had suffered this injury, they would have been back by now. And clearly the Warriors felt that if Kevin Durant had suffered this injury, he would be back by now. We know that by the, the timeline they keep giving that keeps getting adjusted. He's going to travel for games one and two. Could he play then? Maybe he's going to play game three, but almost assuredly going to play game four. And now it's the Morningham game, game five, and he is questionable. And he's a coin flip whether or not he's going to play tonight. What I, so I believe Kevin Durant hasn't played because he feels he cannot. What I also believe, Also, the doctors haven't cleared him. And I, correct, the doctors haven't cleared him, but I, how much of that with Kevin Durant and the doctors is they aren't clearing him based on what he's giving, the information he's giving them. He can't how it run. feels. How, well, well, he's gonna play, if he plays tonight, there is a happy medium of. Well, that's why he wasn't cleared, he couldn't run. And so I, the question that I have, and I think it would appear people in the Warriors have, is where, when they, when they talked about Clay Thompson, and said, Kerr said he would have to be dead for him to say, half dead for him to say, I'm not going to play. Is Kevin Durant that type of guy? Or is he more, I I'm going to fight through yeah, almost that's anything? That's not the fair or comparison to make. It's a different injury. You can't fight through something I can't run. Like when you only play without a leg. 
Like, so it's not even fair for Steve Kerr to be, for him to say that. You have to remove Kevin Durant because his injury is far more significant. If Clay had that same injury, you know where Clay would be doing? Sitting on the bench. With a torn calf, that's what he would be doing. You, you believe every player on the, I just want to make sure I understand. Because I know you've suffered these injuries, and it's a different sport, but you played through them, but you didn't have to jump and take jump shots, so I get that part of it. But you believe every player would be out the same amount of time, or each guy, there are certain guys that feel comfortable playing at 80%. There some guys is that no play guy that can play with a torn calf. Right. But Regardless. At, but at some point, clearly the Warriors and the medical staff thought, after they diagnosed, after they did the rehab, that he would be back by now. Also, at the beginning of the rehab, remember they said, ah, it's more significant. You remember them saying that? They say, this is more significant. I said when he got hurt, I'd be shocked if he played. So this is not a tolerance. How many, the injury has not healed. We can't even get to the tolerance part. Do the Raptors end this tonight? Do the Raptors win their first ever title? I think they do. I think that even with Kevin Durant coming out there, the Raptors have shown you too many different ways that they can beat you. And they have a very tight seven-man rotation that all seven of those guys have played well. Van Vliet and Ibaka off the bench, and they're starting five. I, I think Toronto, with the home crowd, with Kawhi playing like he is the best, as if he is the best player in the world, all of that going for them, I think the Raptors are in position to close it out tonight in a quick five games. The, for the Warriors to win, they got to be able to win three quarters tonight. We've played 16 quarters of basketball. That's four games, NBA, 48 minutes we have seen. They've won three quarters. So tonight, in game five, they're getting ready to win three quarters? I don't think so. Toronto has dominated. They have not even, they, th th this is typically, you're like, oh man, they shot the ball unbelievable. No, they played unbelievable defense, and they got one guy, number two, that there is no answer to. He also goes by the name of Kawhi, also by the name of the Claw. Regardless of Kevin Durant, if he's on the court, I don't believe he'll be on the court tonight. Toronto wins their first championship. And if they do, Kawhi, we sit here tomorrow morning, and we, you have to have the very fair and honest conversation of, has Kawhi Leonard earned the title of best player in the NBA? You go through Orlando, you go through Philly, Milwaukee. I'll be bringing these, the drinks. I want to hear it. Same intensity. Game five Nick. tonight. Much more on Undisputed.